David, you are on the Atheist Experience with Matt and Johnny. Forget it. You guys have destroyed me. I, I, I don't know what to say after all of that. I'm sorry. Are you a ghost from the past? <laughs> I can hear you. I, I appreciate you waiting all this time, David. Yeah. I was trying to get to your call. so Thank you. Okay. I, I was going to tell you all about my, my past history and stuff like that, but my God, you destroyed me um, with your other conversations. I was going to ask you... Um, when you, uh, Matt and Johnny, uh, thank yeah. you very much. Uh, I really appreciate the show. Thank yeah, you thank for your me. patience. I appreciate it. And I, I thanks appreciate for you waiting. Yeah. Oh, yeah, yeah. Well, waiting is no problem. Uh, but, but you had specific uh, questions, and I, I wanted to make sure I answered it. Yeah, so. Exactly. Okay. Why do you think that uh, you were not feeling the call to uh, Jesus Christ from the Father? Or did you? Oh, I thought I did. Right. So I, I was convinced that God wanted me to be a preacher, as were my parents, as were the people in the church. And this is this is so uh, clearly and obviously true that when I did a debate with Mike Lacona on the resurrection here in Texas, former deacons and members of the church that I went to when I was in high school flew down from Missouri to attend to that in order to ask me during the Q&A, essentially, what happened? We thought you were going on to great things for the Lord. So uh, there was a period of time where I absolutely believed that God wanted me to be a minister. And as, as a matter of fact, for the longest time, it was a calling that I felt that I thought I was running away from. But it says here, you wanted to know, did I believe that Jesus actually walked on water and ascended into heaven? Yeah, I literally believed those things when I was a believer, and now I don't. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Well, you see, that that's the thing. It's like, now... I'm I'm trying to uh, reconcile that with me, but uh, the faith of Jesus Christ uh, supersedes uh, the physical reality of whether he did that or not, and it doesn't really matter whether he he did or not. It was whoa, 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 whoa! If he didn't do it, then you believe a lie. Well, I don't believe that the Bible is infallible. Okay, I, so do you believe that Jesus walked on water? I believe he could have. Well, but the point, the that's point, that is so bizarre. So uh, the Bible says he did. You believe he could have, but you won't say you believe he did. What's the point of including a story of something Jesus could have done but didn't do? I mean, it doesn't make sense to me. Yeah, and also, how do you determine which things are true in the Bible and which ones aren't? Like, what's the what's how do you what's your tools? What tools do you use? Exactly. So that you, you hmm. know my argument and oh. um, that's what I've heard you say. So, yeah, but there is no way I can shake this uh, feeling of being called. Uh, okay. I, uh, you know, I, what's it feel like I experience? Yeah. What's it feel like? And what, what do you think you've been called to? <laughs> well, since I was five years old, uh, I went to the uh, Anglican church and they told me about the uh, story of uh, the flood. And I went out and uh, that Sunday afternoon, went to the park and was in the water and I saw the rainbow in the sky. And I thought, oh, sure, this, this justifies it, right? And then- You I saw a rainbow and it justifies what? <laughs> that would justify the story of, the, of Noah's flood. So you think Noah's flood actually happened? Because I saw a rainbow in the sky when I was- so so when you were five, you saw a rainbow in the sky, and that convinced you that at one point the entire earth was covered with water? Right, and then I heard that there were seashells on the top of Mount Everest. Yeah, and does is that more is, is the facts around the seashell more consistent with the global flood or with tectonic plates shifting and some portions that used to be underwater are now above water? Which of those is the better explanation for that observation? Better explanation is tectonic. Yeah. Please. And so do you think that, do, do you still believe that the entirety of the earth was covered by water? No. Okay. So once upon a time you believe something and now you don't. Right. And you are just like me. It's just that you still seem to believe some things that I don't. And I don't know how to get it out of my head. Okay. It's real. So, so tell me one thing that you still believe. Okay. Faith. Well, faith isn't something you believe. Faith is the excuse people give when they don't have a good reason. If you have a good reason for something and I say, why do you believe it? Then you give me the good reason. 
And if you don't have a good reason, and I say, why do you believe it? You say, oh, it's faith. So yeah. okay. faith isn't something you believe. Yeah, faith is like saying, I believe it because I have belief, right? <clears throat> I, had, I had cancer of the duodenum. Uh, okay. it was uh, when I was 27 and that was like uh, 32 years ago. I'm 62 mm -hmm. now. Okay. And, uh, the doctor sat beside me and I said, look, doctor, I am getting really, really bad pains here. And he said, look, David, I can't tell you anything. Uh, the fact that you're sitting in front of me, that's a, that's a miracle to me. And this guy does like eight, you know, appendicitis, appendices a day and you know david david sure, surely the fact that somebody tells you wow this seems like a miracle to me doesn't mean that you're convinced it's a miracle right chief pancreatic uh doctor of north america yeah. what difference does it make is he an expert on miracles <laughs> he's an expert on whether somebody's going to live through an operation no sir no sir he only knows what the statistics in the data show and any doctor that understands this understands that some people go into remission and that some people respond to treatments and that some people do not respond to treatments and that no matter how bad your prognosis is, medicine is not an exact science where he can say, yep, the only way that you're going to survive is if God heals you. That, that is nothing, something no doctor, no scientist could or should ever say and still consider themselves a scientific mind. Yeah, and David, so you had cancer, and I'm assuming right. that you don't now. No, I don't. What treatments did you take for your cancer? <sighs> a couple. A uh, couple treatments, a couple scientific treatments? Two surgeries. Two surgeries, two, two surgeries okay. and, and medication, I'm assuming? No, I didn't have to go through through chemo. or. I didn't ask about chemo, did I? I said, I'm assuming you took medication. And you had two surgeries. Medication. Well, isn't chemo medication? Yes, but not all medication is chemo. If I asked you, did you drive a car? And you said, I didn't drive a Volvo. Would you be answering my question? Sorry about that. Yeah. So uh, you had cancer and you had surgery for it. And, and I'm assuming now you're cancer free and have been for a while. Have been. Yes. Yeah. Fantastic. So. If you went and had surgery, why are you crediting God? Did God perform this surgery? <laughs> because just prior to the surgery, I had uh, a revelation where God said to me, so David, you're dead now. Or so I thought it was God. Okay, might not have been God. He said, how are you going to save your brother, your father, and, and anybody else? And I said, I guess, uh, Father, that there's no way I can save them. Says, How do you know it was God talking to you? Because this sounds like an existential crisis. Yep. A perfectly human existential crisis. It's normal. I can imagine anybody doing it. But the fact of the matter is, if your cancer went away after an operation and you think it's more likely to credit God than the actual fucking doctors and the operation, yeah. you are now no longer in accordance with reason and good evidence. If I might interject here as well, um, David, how many people uh, pray for healing and die. I imagine 99.9% .9 of the people on earth who pray and, uh, had cancer, uh, probably died. So is that God working in mysterious ways then? I wonder how many of those who died thought they got a message from God yeah. near the end of their life. Uh, I, I don't, David, I don't think you're, you're an arrogant person. Nope. You don't sound like it. It's not that. This was very meaningful for you in the time that it happened to you. You had this experience. It profoundly affected you. You got better after receiving medical treatment. And you ascribe to your uh, newer healthy status, it was God and not the doctors who performed the surgeries on you. And I think you're, you're counting the strikes and ignoring the misses, right? Um, if that's, that's probably not the right way to, the hits and the misses. Millions of people pray for their children to be cured of childhood leukemia or recover from an accident or deformity. Um, people who have missing limbs pray all the time for them to grow back and they never grow back. Um, what makes them any different from you? Right. 
is that it happened huh? to me. I, the only thing is, it happened to me. And uh, that's the only thing that was different, I guess. It happened to you with medical treatment, right? right? Exactly. So would you be willing, let me ask you this, would you be willing to um, cut off your arm and then <laughs> pray for God to grow it back for you? Or would that be a, would that be too arrogant of you to do that? It'd be asking for God to perform. <laughs> yeah, I don't think you'd do it, right? Yeah. Uh, do, you, do, no, you, do you do you do you um do you put your seatbelt on when you get in the car? Uh, it's the law here in Canada. But do you do it because it's safe, or do you do it because it's the law? I was pretty arrogant, and I would only do it because it was the law. All right, all right. Well, you know, you should do it anyway because you know it's. We don't want to lose you. So, so basically, David, I, I, I would like for you. I'm going to try to steel man your position, and you let me know where I, where I go wrong. Okay. De decades ago, you developed cancer of the bowel. Yep. A and in the course of this, at some point, a doctor seemed surprised that you were alive or recovering or whatever and there were two surgeries that were done and since then you've been cancer free right okay and and around the time i guess before the surgery you're convinced that you got a, a message from god that said hey if you die you're not going to be able to witness for me yes okay and you said it maybe it wasn't God. I don't know how we can know it's God. But if God's message is, hey, don't die, what exactly can you do about that other than going to have the surgeries? Do you think God was encouraging you to have the surgeries so that science could help you? Or do you think that, I mean, because if, like, if I'm God and I know I'm going to heal you, I don't need to send you a message that says, how are you going to serve me if you're dead? Hang on, I'll save you. I just save you. Hmm. Right. Well, to me, it's your personal. So the thing that makes me worry about whether or not I'm going to be able to be God's representative if I'm dead is me being terrified of being dead. If, if, the, if everything happens according to God's plan, I'm either going to be dead or I'm not. And God's either going to save me or he's not. And any, any worry about this clearly comes from me. But even if you're like, what does it feel like? Okay. So God told you, said, how are you going to essentially serve me if you're dead? Did you hear that audibly? Was it an impression? How do you know that that's what you were told, let alone that it was God? It was, it was pretty word by word. Now it could have been drug induced, <laughs> but it was, it was pretty word by word. And I was sitting there and I wasn't scared. I wasn't afraid of dying. I was afraid my wife has to. Did you hear it? Not did you hear it outside your head or inside your head? inside okay let me ask you this do you think god wanted you to call and share your story here today you know what yeah did you did you get any message from god suggesting you should do that no okay so here's what i'm going to suggest since we're way over time and we need to wrap up the show you should go pray and ask for god what message he wants you to deliver to us and when you get the message that you are convinced God wants you to deliver to deliver to us, call us back. We'll put you on to deliver that message. Thank you, Matt. Thank you, Johnny. You David, can I, can I say something just at the very end here? David, it sounds like you're a caring person and you want to share something that's important to you. You want to help people. Is that part of the message that you want to share? Is that the reason why you want to share it? Actually, I wanted to say that 99.99% of the time somebody thinks that Jesus is talking to them, they're not. Well, D David, I, <laughs> I appreciate that. I but that. but th this is the answer to the question, if you would. I'm giving you a softball here. Do you want to help other people? Do you want to make uh, them better off through your actions? Oh, absolutely, yeah. Okay, all right. Well, we know for certain that volunteering your time, money if you have it, your kindness, your compassion, your patience will help people out. So rather than going through a circuitous argument for why God and all that is real, 
you know, show a heck of a lot more kindness to the people around you. Sounds like you probably do, but that has demonstrable results. And just keep that up. If you're called to some greater action, let that be the greater action. Donate to charities that you believe in. Donate your time and energy. Teach kids to read, whatever it might be, remotely until the quarantine's over. Let, let, let your desire to serve God come out through helping people in tangible ways uh, rather than making not the best arguments on an atheist TV show. Well, it's it's not even we 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 sorted all this out. Call us back when you get a message yeah. from God, David, and if there's some other way we can help. But otherwise, you know, live and enjoy your life and try to be decent. That's yeah. all all any of us can really do. Good we, on you, David. We, we've got a role. I appreciate your time, David. Thanks. Take Have care, David. Bye. On that note, thus endeth the show. Hey, you put a hat on. I didn't even notice that. Oh, this old thing. Yeah, yeah just happened to be sitting there. Yeah, I just happened to be sitting around. I really wanted at one point to run downstairs and get a whole bunch of tinfoil and like manufacture a tinfoil hat here uh, throughout that. I like uh, that. There are people in chat who are desperate to know the how and why behind that. And mm -hmm. um, all I can say is, I don't know, because I didn't know it was going to happen. I wasn't, it wasn't planned, but it's an interesting lesson. And it reminds me of those times when we would test for people's uh, observation of something strange going on in the background of a video or whatever else. Only in this case, it was just my friend <laughs> having fun, being awesome. And I'm really glad that you are here this week. Uh, I hope we can get you back on at other times. Keep kicking ass with nonprofits, which by the way, will remind people you can go and check out nonprofits, youtube.com slash the nonprofits ACA. And you can see the episodes that they are working on right now. We appreciate everybody tuning in. Please stay safe out there and vote. I'm not going to talk about how you should vote or anything else. Just fucking vote. Mm -hmm. We'll see you next week. Bye-bye. Take care.